Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to Chess Mistakes of an A Player, uh, Episode 8. I am uh, taking a look at uh, a group of 12 games that I played about a year ago. Uh, unlike the last time, in the previous video, I said I was playing pretty well. I think uh, by this time my uh, play had started to deteriorate uh, somewhat, and uh, there's a number of fairly simple mistakes that I made uh, in this group of games. And so I thought this would be a good time to focus on uh, some of those ideas that I have talked about earlier with uh, the tactical scan and the uh, blunder check. So the first half of this video I'll talk about uh, examples of that and then uh, in the second half there were a couple of interesting positional mistakes that I made and I'll talk about them. But uh, let's talk about the tactical scan. So this uh, is a position from a game and uh, in my process for thinking about uh, the next move, coming up with the next move, um, the, very, the very first phase I had was the tactical scan. Try and understand um, what are all the tactics in the position, both for myself and for my opponent. So right here, um, how, do, how do you come up with the tactics in a position? Um, the first thing to look for is any checks. You know, does, let's, let's do it for black. Does black have any checks that he can give? Um, I don't see any. So all his pieces are, are somewhat um, away from my king. So there's no, no immediate threat. There's nothing pointing at h2, for example. Okay, so you go on from checks to captures. What are the, all the captures in the position that black has? Uh, black can take the knight here. Black can take the pawn here. Um, any other moves that take things? I think that's it. Well, the rook can also take the pawn, queen. So... Um, and then you look for threats. Are there other moves, for example, that don't take something immediately but threaten to take something? Um, may a bishop here threatening to take my unprotected bishop on b2. So bishop a3 is, is a potential threat, uh, although right now it's, it's uh, not safe. But uh, those are all the moves. You look at all of your opponent's pieces and pawns and say, what, what kind of threat can they make? And then that's your tactical scan. And then I can do the same thing for myself. Now, this bishop takes uh, e3 here is, looks a little bit interesting. There, there may be potential tactics here. It's, for example, rook takes e3, pawn takes, bishop takes e3, check, and uh, I just move the king, and then he can win the exchange. But it doesn't work because he gives up too much material to get that check. The, the, my rook is defended over here, so he's giving up a rook and a bishop to win a rook. Uh, and two pawns. So that's probably okay for me. So there's no tactics really that I have to worry about from my opponent in this position. And then uh, the tactics for white. Do I have any checks? No. Um, do I have captures? Yes, I have some captures here. Let's see, this knight can't take anything, but this knight can ch capture the pawn. Um, and what else? What other captures are there? Bishop, knight, queen. The queen can take the pawn. So I have two pieces focused on that pawn. And um, that's all the captures. <clears throat> and then threats. So if I'm thinking about threats, I might think of uh, knight moves that unleash a discovered attack. I have a rook that's pointing at his bishop. And uh, that, that's one way you can discover tactics in these tactical scans, is you can also look for which pieces of your opponent are unprotected. So the fact that he has a bishop sitting here and uh, nothing is defending it is a weakness in his position. Uh, let's see, everything else is defended and um, let's see, this knight might move. <clears throat> a knight move would unleash an attack on his bishop and the bishop is not adequately defended so knight here, um, if I got another move and I could take his bishop, knight takes, queen takes. So if this knight move could be made with tempo that would also be a threat. But in this case, I don't see, um, I don't see something that knight could do. If, uh, for example, if his queen was sitting on a square here, then knight here attacking his queen would be a nice uh, tempo gainer, perhaps. Although the queen from that square also defends the bishop, so maybe it wouldn't work in any case. But uh, that's not on. So um, there is a tactic here, and and um, so I just kind of described the tactical situation and. Uh, it's a tactic for white. So what, what tactic does white have in this position now? Now that you've heard all of my thoughts on uh, <clears throat> all the checks, captures, and threats, what, what tactic is here for white that works? Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. 
It has to do with this uh, discovered attack on the bishop and the fact that the knight can take the pawn. Those two uh, give a very simple tactic, just uh, knight takes, which I, I didn't play here. Oh, it was my opponent's move here. He played a6. I'm sorry I did that. I should have put that move on first. But uh, it doesn't change uh, the situation too much. After a6, I saw that uh, I saw he had a loose bishop here, and I saw this square might be kind of juicy, so I played this move, knight a4. But the move knight takes uh, d5 is much better because uh, it unleashes an attack on his bishop, and, um, and it wins a pawn. If he takes my knight, I'll just take the bishop immediately. He can hold off for a little bit by taking with the queen and protecting the bishop, but I just keep trading and then take the bishop. So that's an example of the kind of tactic that you should do. Uh, you should pick up just by doing a tactical scan, which you do in the very first phase, uh, even before you start to think about your move. You just want to look at all the tactics, particularly uh, you know, in situations where you're about to get mated. You want to make sure that uh, whatever you come up with defends against the mate. So that is the tactical scan. Um, let's add a couple examples here. Let's close this of uh, blunder checks. So let's talk about that. This is game 639. And uh, I'm white here again. And we'll go up to move 28. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so my opponent's last move was knight d5. And now it is uh, my turn to move. And um, <clears throat> I played the move queen to c5. And actually, this uh, move is a mistake. And uh, it's the kind of mistake that I, I probably should have come up with uh, from the blunder check. So what is the blunder check? Um, you imagine your uh, piece on the square that you're going to move it to. So this you do at the end of your calculation. You've already figured out what you want to play, and you put in your head, you put your piece on that square where you, where you want it to be. And then you ask yourself, what can my opponent uh, do about that? So unlike the tactical scan, this is strictly focused on what your opponent can do to you after you make that move. So what you have to look at, once again, is all of your opponent's uh, captures and threats and checks. Uh, checks. Checks, captures, and threats. I think I do it in that order. Look at the checks first. Um, so imagine the queen sitting on the square c5, and um, think about the captures. And you have to uh, dig a little deeper um, to in this one because it's not the immediate capture; it's the follow-up that causes some trouble. But uh, well, when you see a capture, you need to kind of play through that sequence in your head. Okay, after he takes, and I take back. What uh, is there something awkward about my position there? So if you want to pause and think about that for a second. Yeah, there, there is something awkward about my position. <laughs> after, after I play my queen here and he takes, I take back with the bishop. And what is awkward about this position is I have two loose pieces. So uh, when you're looking at your opponent's tactics, you want to look at your own loose pieces. And not only are they loose, but they're lined up in a uh, row for uh, a potential skewer. So I'm just setting myself up for a skewer tactic. And now the funny thing is, I had actually uh, noticed this before playing the move. Uh, and I thought that I had a defense. So I'm in this position. I'm thinking of playing queen c5. I notice he can take and I can take and he can skewer with the rook. And I'm thinking I have a defense there with the move pawn to b4 defending the bishop. So can you uh, see what's wrong with that? Okay, let's, let's put that on the board again. I went here, he takes, I take. He plays his rook here. And now there's um, the problem is when I play the move b4, it opens up this diagonal onto a rook, so it lo loses the whole rook. Um, if we were to ignore that, and uh, the other problem you might have thought of is uh, can he exploit the skewer with the move pawn to b3? But that actually, um, I mean b6, pawn to b6 hitting the queen, um, I think that is okay. I take 
he takes. And yeah, now that still loses a piece. Yeah, yeah, so it was wrong for two reasons. <laughs> so if you got either one of those, uh, give yourself credit. So that is an example of a, uh, a failure of the blunder check, although that's sort of intermediate between is that really a blunder check or is that something I should have uh, figured out when I'm calculating the move because that was kind of in the main line of what I was thinking. So I might also classify that as a miscalculation, not calculating enough moves ahead. I saw the, uh, I saw the exchange, I saw the skewer, and I had this uh, move that I thought defended and I didn't, I didn't look any further, so I needed to look at least uh, one step ahead. So that's sort of on the borderline between a calculation mistake and a blunder. Um, okay, so one more blunder. I had an example up here. Let's go to this game. And now in this one I have the black pieces, so let's uh, flip the board and go up to move 20. Okay, so let's back up. My opponent just played the move bishop to e2. It's uh, my turn to move, and uh, the move I played <clears throat> was bishop to d5, which looks like a really strong move at first glance. I'm, I'm a little bit better here. Um, my piece is just a little bit more active, and his king is a bit exposed here, but the uh, material is even. So, uh, But with, uh, with good play here, I, I should get an advantage. Um, bishop to d5, however, is... Um, it's not a huge mistake, but he has a way to answer it, so it's not quite as good a move as I thought it was. So, um, um, so I, I had stronger moves in this position, I guess, is the point. So I played bishop d5, but when I was thinking about the move bishop d5, and I was thinking about what white could do in response to that, I was really only thinking about saving his queen. Uh, you know, white has to do something to save his queen, but there's two ways to deal <laughs> with a threat to your to your uh, queen and uh, one is to uh, one is to checkmate your opponent or deliver a check and escape with check that kind of thing another way is to counterattack if you can create a counterattack that is of equal value then maybe that's a perfectly good way of uh, dealing with the situation and uh, and this is the case so in this position you know the blunder check should look at uh, you, you can simplify the blunder check a little bit. When you make a really powerful move, like you make a move that delivers check, um, <clears throat> then your opponent only has a few possible legal responses, and you really only have to look at those responses. You don't have to look at every possible move. When you make a threat against your opponent's queen, you don't have to look at every possible capture or threat that your opponent might make. For example, he can come in here and fork my rooks. That's just not relevant. You don't have to look at that. But you do have to look at um, threats against your own queen or threats against your king. Those are the two pieces that, that really stand out uh, in a case like this where I've attacked his queen and he's got to deal with it. So yeah, after bishop d5 I only considered moves uh, of his queen, but he has a counter-attacking move here. Oh, so let's see, cancel that. <laughs> I didn't play that move. Uh, so yeah, just try and imagine the bishop on this square and then, then see what kind of counter-attacking move white has here. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. Uh, he has a really nice counterattack b4. It's just a simple pawn move that attacks my queen, and it kind of forces the queen trade, <coughs> which I don't really want to trade queens. You know, I had an attack going, and I wanted to take advantage of this uh, situation. I don't want to give up my queen. But if I move my queen away, there's no square that the queen can go to that defends the bishop. Uh, anywhere I move the queen to, I lose the bishop. So that's why this is such a good move, this b4 tactic. So, and after the trade of queens, um, you know, my advantage is pretty much dissipated. So, um, knowing that there's this, um, <coughs> knowing that there's this uh, b4 move in the position, um, there is an interesting move that uh, black has here that takes advantage of the attack on the queen and prevents prevents the move b4 from attacking my queen, and that's actually the best move in the position. So with those clues, can you find the move for black? Yeah, this is a tricky move. I don't know if I would have found it in a real game. Um, <clears throat> but I guess uh, if you think of your your opponent's threats with this b4 threat and you think of ways to prevent it, there is one way to prevent it, which you can just place the bishop on, uh, on b3. It prevents him from playing b4. It's mechanically stopping it. 
And of course, you're still attacking his queen, so the queen has to move. And um, let's see, where can the queen go? The engine was saying maybe um, queen to h4 was the engine suggestion as the best way to play this. And then um, you can take here. He takes back. And then you can bring the bishop to c4 and skewer. And uh, so there's a nice way to continue the attack. You're going to, uh, let's see, if we count the material, if we count that trade has happened. Uh, yeah, the material is still even. So maybe you leave the pin on and you, uh, and you torture you torture the, the pinned piece with a move like uh, rook to uh, e8 or something like that. <clears throat> anyway, that's a, that's a good continuation for black and a nice way to exploit that uh, discovered attack on the queen. So that's kind of cool. So that was it for the, um, the um, tactical elements in this video. I had a couple of uh, positional mistakes I wanted to show you too. So let's uh, close this. Let's see back here. This was on move seven. Yes, I still had the black pieces. Um, I, let's play through the whole game here because this was kind of interesting. Shows how you can uh, get confused a little bit. So he played d4 and I played knight of six thinking, oh, I'll play a Nimzo Indian. So he plays c4 and I play e6. And now he plays g3. And there's different ways you can respond to it. If you, um, But this is no longer a Nimzo Indian and it's not even a Queen's Indian. It's This is... Uh, the Queen's Indian is the second most popular choice here after... Oh, well, then actually, the Queen's Indian is the top choice here. I mean, I shouldn't call it a Queen's Indian. If if uh, white plays knight to f3, that allows a Queen's Indian with a move like uh, <clears throat> b6 over here. Um, and so that's one way to play it. And if he plays knight c3, then you go for the Nimzo Indian. That's another way to play it. But... Um, G3 is a different move entirely, and so it's none of those. So we're not going to be in a Queen's Indian or a Nimzo Indian. And in fact, um, if I play D5, then that's a Catalan opening, and that's a reasonable way to play it. I played C5, and uh, this permits uh, a Benoni, and, but I think this is an okay setup for a Benoni. He can push on here, and uh, that'll, that'll lead to a modern Benoni. But he didn't play that. He played Knight F3 here, defending the pawn. And um, so I took, and because of this... We've actually transposed into an English opening. An English opening would have uh, started off with these moves uh, c4, c5, and so uh, so when he played the move uh, d4, I would have taken right away rather than allowing the, the pawn to sit there. But because he didn't push, we didn't get a Bodoni, so I took. And so now we've transposed into an English opening. So we've <laughs> transposed through about uh, three different openings to get to this position. And you have to sort of recognize this is an English opening and the ideas you have from the Nimzo and other openings you were thinking about don't really apply. Okay, so we just continue developing. He's going to round this pawn up. Um, I defend it or make, make an attempt to defend it, but this doesn't really defend the pawn, of course. He's going to get it. And um, then I throw the move in bishop to b4 check. And he goes knight here. So I'm kind of setting up this uh, Nimzo-like structure. But in this position, um, I make a mistake. So I'll just go ahead and tell you what the mistake is. I, I went ahead and took the knight, which um, you often do in a Nimzo Indian to uh, disrupt your opponent's pawn structure and uh, get some quick castling here. But um, this, in this particular position, this move is a mistake. And um, so let's back up. Can you think of a reason why uh, why that trade might be a mistake, a positional mistake for uh, black? Okay, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away. I looked at it, and um, I mean, the advantage really swings in white's favor after this move. And I think um, the problem is these uh, dark squares. I've given up my dark squared bishop, and I've got this pawn structure, which is on light squares. And I believe that um, that uh, black has some ideas. White white has some ideas of trying to uh, dominate these uh, these dark squares with his bishop and his knight. So in this particular configuration, actually, white has uh, quite a strong advantage, and and I think it has to do with the the dark squares and giving up the dark squared bishop. So that's uh, that's my uh, positional mistake. And then I had one more I wanted to show you. So let's uh, close this. Uh, 6.41, and let's see, I was white in this one, so let's switch it around again, and go forward to move 20. 
Yeah, in this position, my opponent had just played the move a6, kicking my bishop. <clears throat> and um, let's see, this is a position where maybe I'm a little bit better. I have a little more space and my piece is a little active, but uh, the material is even. Um, black is pretty solid. So, uh, you know, I can't just uh, blow him off the board in this position. Um, but I was looking for, you know, tactical, tactical ways to deal with this threat to my bishop. And I played the move d5. And um, so I'm just counterattacking. And that is a big mistake. And I would say it's a mistake on uh, positional grounds. So, uh, so why don't you think about that move and see if you can figure out why that's a mistake. Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away. So the best move in this position is just a simple move bishop takes. Um, he can take back, and then um, I can play a move like h4, threatening h5, and just continue the attack. And notice that my own king position is pretty safe. The knight is defending this pawn. His bishop, um, you know, it looks like it's well posted here, but in fact it's kind of in the way of his own pieces. It's uh, blocking this pawn from coming forward, which restricts... Uh, black's ability to get pieces over to the king's side easily. So this would be um, an edge for white. White has a definite advantage in this position, and that's the way I should have played it. After um, a6, I played the move d5. So I'm attack he attacked my bishop, I attacked his bishop, and I guess what I was thinking is um, I didn't want to leave this bishop around for the long run in case it becomes a good piece in the end game. But that's uh, the wrong way to think about this position. Uh, when I take his bishop, and I, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, cancel that. He took my bishop and I take his bishop. I, maybe I was also thinking I, I would get a good pawn here helping with my kingside attack. But what I've given up here, when he takes my bishop and I take his bishop, I've given up the uh, a-file. There's this open line on the a-file here. And, uh, and he can exploit that immediately, which he does. He pushes on with b4 kicking my knight out of the way. The knight goes forward. I'm, I am getting my pieces towards his king, but now his pieces are faster. His rook comes in. Um, let's see, I move my king over here to try and chase the rook away, and then the queen comes in. And now the tables have completely turned, and uh, black just has a winning attack here. So let's go back to that original mistake. And why am I calling that a positional mistake? I mean, it is possible that I could have calculated all of those tactics and saw that um, black had a winning attack at that point. But this is a, a kind of position where you don't even need to really calculate that. You just think about what's going on here and um, do you really want to allow your opponent to open up a file towards your king? A file where his rook is already placed. So you're speeding up his attack and giving him lines. Whereas if you just take, which is the, the recommended line, uh, you keep that file closed and uh, you have ideas of continuing your own attack, and your king is relatively safe. And the fact that you have a knight versus a bishop is just uh, of no consequence at all, basically. So, uh, so that's that was my uh, <laughs> my second positional mistake in this uh, in this video. Okay, that that wraps it up for this one. Let's see. Let's get back to that position right here, right after a6. Yeah, so that's where I made the wrong move. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, leave me any comments you have in the section below, and uh, I'll be back again with uh, number eight or uh, number nine. See you then. Bye.